So it's been a while since I've measured my hair, but the last time it was around three feet. So let's see if we're still at that point. I feel like if I just put this at my part and let this cascade down. So it looks to be about 40 inches, which is about three and a half feet. So as someone who's five foot three, that's over half of me. <laughs> My name is Molly, and I'm gonna show you how I style my three foot long ginger hair. I didn't necessarily plan on having hair this long. It kind of just was the outcome of many haircuts where I was too scared to cut off more than an inch or two. I just kept it going until it accidentally became part of my identity. <laughs> My hair definitely has its own like personal space bubble. I've definitely sat on it. The other day, my cat knocked over the trash can next to the toilet. I went to pick up the trash can and realized that my hair was in the toilet. So as a content creator, it wasn't until I started making these videos that I actually started learning to do more intricate braiding. But then it, it started shifting into like the fantasy renaissance because everybody was like, you look like you're in the show Vikings or Game of Thrones. So then I started kind of recreating those looks, which then started kind of spilling over into like the costuming and the outfits and the throne. This is actually a vintage dress from the 60s, handmade. This is like a great example of like the 60s, 70s Renaissance revival. It's just such a special piece to me and I hope I never grow out of it. <laughs> So this is one of my most extravagant, expensive dresses. It's actually extremely long. It's by a Romanian brand called Chatronette. So when it's on, you have these really dramatic sleeves here. You've got the chain details. It's kind of, you know, reminiscent of chain mail. Obviously you wouldn't go to battle in this dress, but this is the dress that you would wear while you were ordering people around to battle for you. And the train is massive. So when you have like a really extravagant dress on, really extravagant hairstyle, sometimes a nice crown just really tops it off. This is one of my favorite crown styles where it kind of, you know, dips in to your forehead. And it just looks really nice with like braids or like a middle part. This one is like very woodland fairy. It has like the wings on it and everything and the little mushrooms. So this would be a really cool like spring fairy tiara. So after people watch my videos, I like them to feel like they've been somewhere else or they've gotten a little glimpse into like a more simple world where we're just doing our hair and putting on dresses. <laughs> the first order of business when I'm doing this braid is to just section everything. The braid that I'm gonna do today, it's kind of similar to a bubble braid, but the variation that I kind of came up with was to make some of the strands of the braids actual braids themselves. So it, like it's like braidception. I start with like a Dutch braid on the top. When I first started braiding my hair, I, I definitely was learning by watching tutorials. And once you get kind of a, a feel of the pattern, you can learn to do like variations to it that look really complicated, but the base is still just a three strand or just a four strand or a five strand. Okay, so I kind of braid down a little bit and secure it just so I can put a hair tie where I want it without the braid unraveling at the bottom. Then I kind of pull open these little pieces and it just kind of volumizes the braid. So I'm gonna split this ponytail into two equal parts. So I'm just gonna get this out of the way. I think I'm just gonna do the tuck. I'm gonna make about seven small braids. So I'm just gonna kind of try to figure out the thickness that they want them that I want them to be. So I'm just braiding this all the way down to the bottom. This is just a normal three strand braid. This is probably the most time consuming part. Reach into my treasure chest, grab an elastic. One down, 13 to go. Having 14 total is kind of just a rough estimate. I'm I'm more focusing on making sure that I have the same number on both sides and that they're pretty similar in thickness. All right, braid number four. It's really easy to leave strands out. Whenever that happens, I either just like weave it back through the braid or I just only shoot from the front and I hide it behind my back. 
<laughs> so this is what I have left. I feel like if I were to split this into three, it would get really thin at the ends. So I'm just gonna split it into two and then we'll have six braids instead of seven. All right, this is braid number six. So just moving on to the other side, I just split this into two and I'm gonna add my six braids on this side. So when it comes to my more intricate styles of braids, or if I'm just doing a braid that I'm not really sure where it's going, how it's gonna turn out, I usually give myself about a three hour window of how long it, it might take. All right, I'm on the last braid. I wish I could say it gets easier from here, but unfortunately that would be a lie. So now that I have my six braids on each side and then this free hair, this is where we start the actual braid. So I'm gonna weave portions of this free hair and these braids. Free strand and then a braid, free strand and then a braid, and just continuing that pattern. So now I'm gonna take these braids out and I'm going to clip them out of the way. So now with this hair that is left over, I'm gonna take a hair tie and just secure it all right, I'm gonna take these out now carefully. And to finish off this first section, I'm just gonna pull each section that's in between these braids. It kind of gives like a lantern effect. All right, so now we just repeat the process, except we have the braided section on top. Again, clipping this out of the way and then securing these braids with the hair elastic. So now we have those and now we do the same thing. We're just pulling the individual braids out. And this is the part where it starts to look like a bird cage. With the braids, I have to make sure that I'm doing them in order because it's really easy to get them crisscrossed. So you wanna keep them in the order that they are laying. I'm so good at describing stuff, can you tell? That one's a good little sphere. Okay, so this is gonna be the last little bubble and then I'm gonna end it. I'm gonna stop it right here because I feel like if I try to do one more braid, bubble, though they've gotten a little bit too thin. So I feel like this is a good ending point. So the most common question is, do my hands or my arms hurt while I'm doing this? And when it's a braid that's like right in front of me, not really. Behind my head, yes, sometimes, but it's actually my back that hurts the most <laughs> from just sitting up the long. I shouldn't say that with that one. <laughs> it's actually my back that hurts the most just from sitting up, having my, my arms up. So I'm just gonna secure this at the end because I'm gonna take the rest of these braids out at the bottom. So I'm just putting a little bit of heat protectant where I'm gonna curl. I'm just gonna curl these little pieces that I left out and I'm gonna give a little bit of curl to the bottom. I think that'll bring a fun texture into the braid. I like to call these little pieces that I leave out uh, my slut strands because they remind me of like the little pieces of hair in the front that the maidens had back in the day after being in the brothel. This is like my favorite curling wand that I own. It's the GHD Thin Wand. And it's just so perfect for like getting like really small ringlets. All right, now I'm gonna do some decorations. I don't use real plants because my cats will eat them. They'll also eat these, but at least these won't poison them. And I have a bird. I'm gonna see if he fits anywhere in here since it kind of looks like the bird cages. I don't wanna go too overboard because this is already kind of a busy braid. I find it easiest to just stick it in the hair ties. So when we started this braid, the sun was up. As you can see, um, no longer is. <laughs> so that can just kind of give you a sense of how long this kind of thing takes. All right, I'm gonna try to put my little bird friend, I think in this one. I think that's where he will have the most room. I use a lot of like craft supplies as hair accessories. So this is technically for like making a, a wreath. Look at him sitting in there. <laughs> so cute. All right, this is the final look with all the embellishments added. I, I feel like I've become a pro at this particular braid. Uh, even though it looks really complicated, as long as you know kind of the basic steps, it's more time consuming than it is complicated. Even though, you know, hair is, a, is a something that's superficial, 
You know, it's not who I am. It's part of who I am, but it's not completely who I am. It's definitely such a great way to express who I am and really have something that's unique and show other people that you can also have something that's super unique about you and could just completely embrace it and just run with it. And I do love that it inspires younger people who have red hair or have long hair or even just really like the, you know, fantasy kind of aesthetic. I feel like it gets, you know, kind of a nerdy, bad rep sometimes. But being able to kind of bring it into the mainstream and make it more accessible and, and kind of normalize it is a really cool thing to be able to do.